Welcome back to the Azure Education Governance Series. This is Video 10, Azure Policy and Management Groups. My name is Amy Manley. Along with me is Eric W. DeBoard and David Uloa, and we're going to see where Contoso is at. So current state, we've seen that Contoso has created the necessary VMs and resource groups in that last video. And we've used RBAC to give proper permissions, but there still is a concern about um, people may be over provisioning or putting a VM in the wrong location, so they want to see if there's anything in Azure that allows some sort of restrictions or policies that they can use to restrict that. So we're, we're going to look into Azure policy to complement the role-based access controls they have in place, and they're ready to learn more. And then we also are going to look at management groups as a way to compile policy and role-based access controls into one central location, so as you add, as Contoso adds more subscriptions, they don't have to keep recreating that access. Hey, Amy, uh, this is David. That's that's one of the things that we see a lot with with education customers is they learn about role-based access and uh, they want to see, you know, maybe there's additional roles that can restrict, um, you know, creation of certain resources and. Uh, we tend, you know, we we talk to customers and and mention that Azure policy is, like you said, what complements role-based access, mm -hmm. to make sure folks uh, stay compliant, right, and not deploy maybe VMs in another Azure region, like maybe outside the U.S. So we'll we'll dive deeper into that today. Sounds good. So what is Azure policy? Policy. Um, it's definitely a way to keep your resources compliant, so you define your policy, and we'll show you later in the demo that you can audit resources or make sure and restrict resources like that VM scenario that I can't deploy outside the U.S. with, with using policy, and you can see the compliance or enforce compliance. So unlike old base access controls, policy is, by default, it allows you to do things, but then you can explicitly deny. And some of our best practice tips would be to use initiatives to group common policies together so you don't have to always pick four policies to apply to your subs subscription or you can create an, an initiative to group it all together. And there are exclusions that you can use to block inheritance. So if you're worried about a certain resource group inheriting that policy you created, you can create an exclusion. And there's also audit options if you really don't want to pull the trigger yet and you just want to see what's happening in your environment, you can just do an audit and get um, more data into what's happening before you start enforcing and cracking down on people. Hey, Amy, the, yeah, the other thing is to keep in mind is uh, in, in the policy, uh, Azure policy GUI that we're going to show, there's a lot of built-in uh, policies already created by Microsoft, so you, you'll see that customers are not going to have to go in there and, and have to uh, define a lot of those. You can just use some of the ones that are already in place and take advantage of it right away, even the audit ones, so we'll see that. And I'll mention here something really quickly, and that is that the initiatives that you mentioned there, those mm -hmm. are basically thought of, just think of those as containers that contain a number of policies under a category. So maybe you'll have an initiative for security uh, policies. You'll have an initiative for you know boundaries of where things can be deployed or SKUs that can be deployed. So I just want to mention that really quick. Thanks, Eric. All right, and now what are management groups? So you can create a... And it's again, it's like a container, like you were mentioning, for policies and initiatives. A management group is technically a container for subscriptions. So you can create your root management group, and now you can apply policies and RBAC at a scale and make sure anything new comes under um, into that compliance. So in that tip, it's saying, you know, if you sign to the root, it'll all trickle down the hierarchy of subscriptions. Yeah, Amy, so this really makes uh, managing, you know, subscription and policies, right, very easy because now as you define this management group, those uh, those policies, those permissions, everything gets applied. So uh, as, as is a lot, maybe, maybe when you're starting out, maybe small, you know, one subscription may not be mm -hmm. used as often, but definitely in an enterprise when you're starting to deploy many subscriptions, management groups come really handy. Right, you don't want to keep re, you know, redeploying the same thing over and over, recreating permissions you've already created. So I'm glad these are available now. 
And then the next slide is just more of a visual for management groups. You can see you would have your, your root group and your subscriptions within it. So you can just, you can use it for alignment um, and you can target policies and spend budgets across subscriptions and enable that compliance for your organization or for Contoso education and maybe enforce tagging for cost. Yeah, I mean, one, one example that I've seen um, is, for example, the, the security team that uh, needs to have access to all the subscriptions. And mm. that's, a, that's an example where the, that, you know, that permission could be defined at a management group so that any new subscription, you know, the security team has access, even if it's only for uh, overview. Right. There's no excuse for them not to have visibility. That's a great, that's a great point. And then Azure policy versus RBAC or role-based access control is, let's say, you know, Amy, the VM builder, I have permissions to build VMs in, within my resource group, but Contos has decided that policy that we are only going to deploy within the U.S. and we're only going to deploy a certain VM size. Well, the resulting rights are, is that overlap of policy. Yes, I can deploy VMs, but now policy is restricting me a little bit on what I'm able to deploy and where. So Contos has made some decisions on their policies and on using resource locks. So initially, the resource policies will be region restriction. Well, they'll only use West U.S. and East U.S., and then VM sizes just to keep people from over-provisioning and getting a little crazy. Um, and then the resource locks are really important. They can prevent accidental deletion with the do not delete lock. So any important resource group, you know, we've seen it with customers that something got deleted by somebody else and that's definitely not a situation you want to be in. And then a further restrictive lock is the read-only lock, where we would apply that to the Active Directory resource group, where no modifications can be made at all. It's read-only for everybody. With the do not delete lock, you can still modify, but you cannot delete, which is very important. Hey, Amy, one, one thing I just to call out there where it says VM sizes, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you know, in that example here, the A series and the D series are the general purpose, uh, kind of like A series are for the entry level VMs and the D series are the general purpose. Most customers will deploy those VM sizes. So it's a, it's a great policy, right? That covers most workloads. But like you said, if, if, if you don't have a policy, uh, you may have an administrator deploy, let's say, an M-series VM, which uh, mm -hmm. is very costly. And then, you know, you may end up having to involve your account team saying, why am I spending this much money? And then not realize that they deployed a very, very expensive VM. So definitely very good use case here for policies. Right. A lot of people are worried about not knowing if someone deployed that big VM and then until they get that bill. So this is a proactive way to eliminate that. <laughs> so now we're going to demo what Azure Policy and those resource locks look like. So get into the portal. And go into resource groups just to... So these are the resource groups we've deployed previously, the Active Directory resource group, the network, storage, VM, and then we had that resource, research application. First, I'm going to show you the locks. So this is the Active Directory resource group. And on the left, you can see that there's the locks. So if you select that, this is where I added the read-only lock type, and you do that just by clicking Add. And there's only the two types. There's the read-only or delete, which is kind of misleading. Delete really means do not delete. Like, it's unable to be deleted. So for Active Directory, we made it read-only so no one can modify our Active Directory environment. And then in the other resource group. And a good way to think about that, Amy, just chiming in on that, is mm -hmm. I am locking delete, so I'm preventing There delete. you go. That's a good way to think of it. Because at first it threw me off. Wait, that was not the other resource group. What was it? And by the way, Amy, this um, those resource locks, uh, mm -hmm. that's that's going to be enforced also 
in 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 PowerShell and scripts. So yeah. One of the things to keep in mind is, you know, as folks start to experiment and maybe automate, you know, deployments and and managing of resources using PowerShell or CLI, uh, you can imagine you can very easily delete virtual machines in mass, right? You can do a quick loop and and delete your entire resources that you deployed. So having logs uh, really helps preventing you preventing that oops moment, right? That you you, uh -huh. you you meant to do something else and then you end up deleting, uh, you know, resources. So very important. Right. Definitely. And yeah, here's the example. It's just a do not delete. This is important. This is networking. And now we can go into policy. So I'm going to just do a search on policy. You'll see it's a service within Azure. Got it. Yeah, so you didn't Here. have to deploy the service, right? It, it already exists. Right. It already okay. exists. So if, if you click under all services right there in the top left, uh, you you also see it as a listed listed server. Okay. And you could always so you could always pin the the shortcut there just clicking on the star. There we go. So there are a lot of predefined ones available for your use. And like we said, there's the auditing, where you can just audit accounts if you kind of expand. You can just do an audit and you know allow, but just log. And then you can also filter if you want something specific. So I wanted the VM skew or VM location, I'll do a search on. That's what it was. Let's do a search on location. There we go. Allow locations. So I already created this, but if you click on it, this is where you can see the effects of what it can do, and you can assign it here and edit. But I'll go back to my actual policy. Let's see if I go to overview. So I have allowed locations created, and you can see we're compliant. And if you One thing the I'll mention here, Amy, is that with these allowed locations, let's assume mm -hmm. that you just assigned it to a resource group that already existed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to delete anything that was there no. in the first place, but it's going to give you a, a compliance report that says you're out of compliance. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and this is another reason that you know you don't have to put these in place right away when you're deploying Azure. These are things you can do after the fact, and that typically is how it flows. Right, exactly. So once you define it, then you can go ahead and assign your policy and search through your environment and apply it to a subscription. So, and that's what I already did. So I'll hit cancel. And you can even edit the assignment if you want to change it later or delete it. Under definitions, Amy, one, one thing mm -hmm. that we want to just point out is that, again, th there's, there's a whole bunch of definitions that are already um, developed. And, and ready to use. But if you click on categories, you get to see all the categories. I want to point out some of the more recent ones. You can even start leveraging Azure policy for um, enforcing guest configuration, so the actual inside the VM. So you'll see a category that are called guest configuration. And um, yeah, if you just select that one, you'll get to see some of those more recent policies that have been added. So for example, you'll be able to now audit uh, you know, password complexity, for example, inside the VM itself. So That's just, great. you know, just to, you know, let, let folks know that this, this service is being improved on. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and so always check back to see what other uh, policy definitions become available. Yeah, it seems like every day there's more. So that's the end of our demo. Well, actually, I could go over the other policy, the SKU policy. See, just show that as well for Contoso. So allow virtual machines. 
And this is where we describe that we're only allowing these series. And if you view the definition, it'll show you the JSON. And the list of allowed SKUs, and if it's if it doesn't fit that instance, then it will deny you. But like Eric mentioned before, if it's an existing VM that's outside of that policy, it will not affect it. It will just show it's not compliant. Amy, I want to also point out one other thing that we didn't mention under your definitions, mm -hmm. and that is the initiative. If you click on your definitions. Oh, yeah. Uh, the initiative there is, uh, we mentioned it in the slides, uh, but you can create a new initiative definition. Uh, and this initiative definition is basically going to be, uh, you know, for example, you could say that you want to assign it to a particular scope, like Amy did with her policy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if she chooses a subscription here, she can do that. And, and then you're going to give it a name. And then as you move along through this, the name of this could be, uh, you know, my management boundaries or my management and monitoring boundaries, whatever you want. Uh, and what you would do here, uh, is, as you can see to the right of the screen, it's going to let you start adding policies to this initiative. And so what you could do, rather than assigning a policy directly to subscriptions, uh, we do recommend that you assign initiatives that contain policies to your uh, scope. So just wanted to mention that really quick. So, so it's, it's basically a container that contains many uh, policies that might, you know, fit into a category of security or management or uh, those sorts of things. And that's great. So you don't have to keep, you know, applying the same four policies. You can just apply the group. Oh, and that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that, Amy, because... Uh, once you have an initiative assigned mm -hmm. you want to apply a new policy, you just add it to that initiative and move on. Oh, that's great. And then everything is inherited already. All right. So now we're done with our demo. And this is just another slide to show you how policy and RBAC can work with management groups. So we created our management group. We created our policies. We have our permissions. If we apply it to that root management group, it will trickle down to all the subscriptions that Contoso has and any new ones that get added. So it's just a good way to visualize how it actually works and trickles down. So next steps, Contoso will use everything they learned through this governance series and continue building out their Azure environment. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next video series.